and now we want the Big Sur arrival. Same thing with KSFO, you'd want the airport diagram as you would probably be taxing to a gate. I'm not going to do that again because I don't have a working joystick and so this is going to be mostly autopilot controlled. It's going to be mostly about using the autopilot. Okay, what's going on? Okay, what I thought was the Big Sur arrival doesn't seem to be here. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So, something changed or something. Okay, well, here's another flight that used BSR 2 or Hadley 2. Let's see. I'm having a problem here. Oh, right. Whoops. Make sure you're looking at standard terminal arrivals and not departure procedures when you want to look for a standard terminal arrival procedure. <laughs> I've never done that before. That was weird. Okay. And I'm thinking I'm going to land on runway 28 left because that one's not going to be crowded, hopefully, like 2-8 right will be. And the way the weather usually is, and the way it's going to be actually for fair weather, there's a different runway that would be much more nice. Oh, look at that. Okay. This, <coughs> this procedure dumps you right out onto the runway. Okay. So yeah, I will hit GPS, uh, definitely, of course. I will hit radio navigation. So, yeah, everything should be covered for the most part. At this point, I have all the information I need. I'm not going to bother with fuel loading because I haven't figured that out yet completely, and I don't really want to bother with doing test flights and crap, so... This, the default fuel load should be fine. I'm going to use the uh, old version of the 737-300 because for me that has an auto lander on it. And I'll explain what the auto lander is doing as it goes. So, like, don't worry about that so that you can try to mimic it. Because so I managed mim mimicking the auto lander in other planes. So, it seems to work pretty well, even though it's kind of crude. So, for here, winds are going to be uh, one, uh, 150 at 3, because I'll be using fair weather. So, I'll probably be taking off from 7... And this is where the airport diagram comes into play as well, since it's really, really hard to tell a 10 degree difference. Okay, and 7 left we can see it's longer than 7 right, so 7 left is more preferable than 7 right. Longer runways are always more preferable, longer and into the wind. So, yeah, I'm going to be, you know, not quite doing the right thing when I land, but Oh well. So climb via heading 070 for vectors to VTU, VOR, then via assigned transition or assigned route. Expect further clearance. Well, we're not going to have an air traffic controller to clear us to the filed flight level three minutes after departure. So we're going to clear ourselves. Um. So we go zero seven zero and to RZS.
Okay, you know what? What we're going to do is we're going to take off on runway heading, get some altitude, you know, and then turn as soon as possible for this one. So we go to VTU, Ventura, and then San Marcos. And we can use that with the GPS. Now I notice it says, okay, since we're not taking off from any of the 25 or 24 runways, we don't have to worry about this 3,000 foot ceiling. That's what the line over top of it means. And we don't have to worry about the 6,000 feet because that's just a general guideline that you should be generally at that altitude or above or around there or something. We're going to go straight for 30,000 feet since the 737-300 can handle that. And... Okay, time to get started.